Shabbat Shalom, family, Messiah Yeshua. Shabbat Shalom to the worldwide YouTube and social media community. This is your beloved brother, Shaul Yisrael, coming back again with another Yahweh-inspired message. I'll be reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 101, and starting at verse 1. The book of Psalms. Chapter 101, starting verse 1. Again, the book of Psalms, chapter 101 and verse 1, and I read. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto you, O Yahweh, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. O when will you come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. They shall not cleave to me. A forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Who the privily slanders his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that has an high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with, them, with, with me. He that walks in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that works deceit, shall not dwell within my house. He that tells lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers from the seed of Yahweh. And my target is verse 7. He that works deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that tells lies shall not tarry in my sight. And turn to Romans chapter 16 and verse Romans chapter 16 the book of Romans chapter 16 and starting at verse 17 Again, the book of Romans chapter 16, verse 17, and I read. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them, which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our King Yeshua HaMashiach, but their own will, and by good words and fair speech deceive the hearts of the simple. And turn to the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians, chapter 3, book of Philippians, chapter 3, the book of Philippians, chapter 3, and starting at verse, hmm, Sixteen. The book of Philippians chapter three. I'll start at verse one. The book of Philippians chapter three starts at verse one. The book of Philippians chapter three starts at verse one and I read. Finally, my brother, rejoice in Messiah Yeshua to write the same thing to you to me indeed not grievous, but for you is safe. But we have dogs. We have evil workers. We have the concision. We have the circumcision which worship Elohim in the spirit and rejoice in Hamashiach Yeshua and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might have, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man think that he has worth, he might trust in the flesh. I, I mourn. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal. Persecuted the assembly, concerning the righteous in the law, blameless. That, but what things were gained to me, those I count loss for Hamashiach. Yet, yes, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the exit of the sermon of Hamashiach Yeshua, my King, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and we count them but dumb, that I may win Hamashiach, and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Hamashiach, 
the righteous through the Elohim by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, that he may conform unto his death, and by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. By fall out, if I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended for of Hamashiach, be sure. For I caught not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forget those things which are behind and reach forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling Elohim in Hamashiach, be sure. Lest therefore as men be perfect, be thus minded, and if in anything be you be otherwise minded, Elohim shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let's walk by the same rule, let's mind the same thing. Rather be false together with me, and mark them which walk so as you have for us for an example. For they walk, of whom I have told you often, and not even tell you weep. For me walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the image of being reconciled with Yahweh, whose end is destruction, whose Elohim is their will, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in Shamaim, from where also we look for the Savior, the King Yeshua HaMashiach, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like this glorious body, According to the working whereby he is able even to do all things unto himself. I read that to say this. I read those select scriptures to read to say this. Do not respect a false prophet. Do not respect a false prophet. For Yahweh, our Great L, do not respect false prophets. And as I forestated, a false prophet is a man who Yahweh has never sanctioned, authorized, nor commanded to proclaim and instruct his word. In order for a man to proclaim, and instruct the word of Yahweh, he must be sanctioned of Yahweh. He must be authorized of Yahweh. And when a man is sanctioned, authorized, and ordained of Yahweh to preach and teach his word, he is established first as a disciple of Yahweh's son, Yeshua HaMashiach, who Yahweh appointed to purchase redemption and reconciliation with Yahweh. So all true messengers, instructors of the word of Yahweh are first Established as a disciple of Yahweh. And in order to become a disciple of Yahweh, you must be born into Yahweh's Son, the second Adam, Jesus Christ. And to be born into the second Adam, you must be born again. And to be born again according to the scripture, you must obey Acts chapter 2, verse 38. That is, one must repent of their sin and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ or Yeshua HaMashiach or Lord Jesus. And you must receive the initial infilling and the renewing of the Holy Ghost or the Seraphite Spirit or the Ruach HaKodesh as initially evident by speaking in another tongue as Yahweh gives permission to speak. That's how one becomes a disciple. 
And once one is becomes a disciple by obedience to Acts 238, then one must master the principles of the doctrine by diligently learning and obtain understanding of the principles of the doctrine of Yahweh. And there are six principles of Yahweh's doctrine. And they are as follows. Belief in only one God. Yahweh is one. Belief in mere man Christology. Jesus Christ was only and exclusively a man. Belief in the new birth, according to Matthew 38. Belief in the observance of the feast days, as outlined in Leviticus chapter 23. And belief in the observance of the diet instructions, as outlined in Leviticus chapter, chapter 11. And belief in living set apart. When a man has mastered the principles of the doctrine of Yahweh, he becomes fully in fellowship with Yahweh. This word means to be full of the self our spirit. It means one has been has has been fully in fellowship with Yahweh. He fully under the dominion and the guidance of Yahweh's presence within him. And once a man has reached maturity by mastering the principles of the doctrine of Yahweh, he is eligible to be raised up by Yahweh to ministry. Again, there are only four offices of ministry. They are as follows. The apostle, the prophet, the bishop, which is an elder, and deacon. If any man teach you that there are no more apostles now, then that man has taught you a lie. He has and is seeking to turn you away from the scriptures. For Yahweh said that according to his wisdom, he will send men to be prophets, and apostles because in order for a man to become an elder which is the bishop you must have an apostle in order for a man to become a deacon you must have an apostle because both bishops and deacons are not called and sent direct by Yahweh so any man that claims to be a minister a preacher and teacher of the scriptures of the gospel of Yahweh, but yet he is not an apostle. He is not a prophet, but yet he claimed to be an elder, which is a bishop, or claimed to be a deacon. That man is a liar, because only two men of men are appointed direct by Yahweh, and that is the apostle and the prophet. See, it doesn't matter if you disbelieve the word of Yahweh. Our brother Shaul Yisrael is charged of Yahweh to preach and teach the word of Yahweh. And Yahweh is responsible for the results and the effects of his word upon the hearts and minds of men. And Yahweh has promised that only those whom he has drawn, only those whom he has chosen will receive his word. And those whom Yahweh have not chosen, they will be given a testimony of damnation against the soul. So only two men of men are called and sent of Yahweh. That's the apostle and the prophet. The two men of men that are appointed indirect by Yahweh are the bishop, which is an elder, and the deacon. For all the offices of ministry, which are four offices of ministry, 
or stabs upon discipleship. And over for a man to be raised up to be a minister of Yahweh according to Yahweh's will and authorization, he must be made into a disciple. And he must be developed into maturity by mastering the principles of the doctrine. With a false prophet, he has not been made as a disciple. Thus, he was not born again. Either he was not baptized and born in the name of Jesus Christ and did not receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit or he had not reached maturity in the renewed man. By mastering the principles of the doctrine, thus he is ineligible to be raised up by Yahweh to ministry. So a false prophet is one who Yahweh did not authorize, did not sanction, did not appoint to preach and teach his word. Thus, a false prophet is a damn liar. His motive. His purpose is to lead people away from the straight and narrow path that leads to life and to lead people, those who are unlearned and unstable, to destruction. Thus, all false prophets, all false teachers are not to be respected. They're not to be followed. Do not respect a false prophet. I, Brother Shaul Yisrael, do not respect false prophets, nor false teachers, nor their damn followers. Such false prophets as Israel united in Christ, such false prophets as sons of thunder Israelites, such false prophets as God's warrior 29A, including that punk bitch of uh, uh, Mr. Hebrew 1, Jacob Israel, he's a certified false prophet. I don't respect no false prophet, such as Malachi Maccabee who denied the scriptures, no false prophet, no false teacher is deserving of respect. They are deserving of great disrespect. They deserve to be shamed, shunned, and mocked. Because in judgment, a false prophet will be damned to the lake of fire. Do not respect the false prophet. Don't have fellowship with the false prophet. Because those who fellowship with the false prophet, those who respect the false prophet, are in league with the self same spirit who appointed the false prophet to function, and that is Lucifer. It's written in 2 John. Second John chapter one and verse seven. Second John chapter one and verse seven. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Yeshua Hamashiach is come in the flesh. Now to confess that Yeshua Hamashiach is come in the flesh is to believe that Yeshua Hamashiach or Jesus the Christ was a man only. To confess that Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, came in the flesh is to confess, is to affirm the scriptural testimony that Jesus of Nazareth was a man only. Anyone who teaches that Jesus Christ was more than man, that he was, uh, he had a dual nature, human and divine, 
you confess not that he came to flesh and you are a deceiver and an antichrist. All who confess that Jesus Christ was more the man than he was uh, a, a, a demigod, uh, he had a dual nature, uh, that he pre-existed his conception, you are a deceiver and an antichrist. Mean you're not serving Yahweh. And those who follow such a teaching that Jesus Christ was more than a man, you're a deceiver and an antichrist. Let me read 2 John chapter 1, verse 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that you show up should come to flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Verse 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever, whosoever transgresses and abide not in the doctrine of Hamashiach, and the doctrine of Yeshua HaMashiach is the Apostle's doctrine. And the Apostle's doctrine is established upon six principles, which are belief in one God, strict mafias. The first principle of the Apostle's doctrine is strict monotheism. Let me say it again. The first principle of the Apostle's doctrine is strict monotheism. The second principle of the Apostle's doctrine is mere man Christology. Jesus Christ was a man only. The third principle of the Apostle's doctrine is the new birth, according to Acts 38. The fourth principle of the Apostle's doctrine is the feast days, as outlined in Leviticus chapter 23, and includes the separate memorials, as outlined in the book of Maccabees and the book of Esther. So, the first principle of the Apostle's Doctrine is strict monotheism. The second principle of the Apostle's Doctrine is mere Christology. The third principle of the Apostle's Doctrine is the new birth according to Acts 38. The fourth principle of the Apostle's Doctrine is the feast days, as outlined in Leviticus chapter 23, and the book of Maccabees, and the book of Esther. The fifth principle of the Apostle's Doctrine is the dietary instruction. And the sixth principle of the Apostle's Doctrine is living set apart. The book says, Whosoever transgresses and abide not in the doctrine of Hamashiach hath not Yahweh. He abides in the doctrine of Hamashiach, he hath both the Abah and the Son. So if you abide in the Apostle's Doctrine, you not only have fellowship with the Son, Jesus Christ, but you have fellowship with Yahweh, His Father, His Creator. So those who don't abide in the Apostle Doctrine, those who are not preaching and teaching the Apostle Doctrine, you don't have fellowship with Jesus Christ. And you don't have fellowship with Abba Yahweh. Thus, you are in fellowship, you are in league with the Satan. For Satan is not just limited to Lucifer, but encompasses all adversaries of Yahweh and his people, the new Israel. If there come any of you, if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, what doctrine? The apostles' doctrine. Receive him not into your house. Now bid him God, Yahweh speed. Let me read again. If there come any of you and bring not this doctrine, the apostles' doctrine. Receive him not into your house. Now bid him Yahweh speed. For he bids him Yahweh speed and partake of his evil deeds. So if you're bidding, if you're supporting, if you're respecting, and if you're following a false prophet, you are partaker of the evil deeds of a false prophet, of a false teacher. 
So do not support, do not respect, don't have fellowship with a false prophet. Because all who fellowship with false prophets and false teachers are in league with the adversary of Yahweh. And if you're an adversary of Yahweh, you will not enter. You will not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh prepared for those before the foundation of Shamaim and Eretz, for those who love Yahweh, those who obey Yahweh. So don't respect the false prophets. Don't respect false teachers. Don't respect the followers. In fact, I say it boldly and gladly. Damn false prophets. Damn false teachers. And damn their followers. In order for us to receive salvation, you must be obedient to every word of Yahweh. For salvation is established upon and predicated upon obedience to the scriptures to the set apart scriptures in order to receive salvation you must be obedient to every word of Yahweh for it's written straight is the gate and now is the way that leads to life and only a few that be that will find it and that stray gate and that narrow way is the way of total obedience unto Yahweh. But that wide gate and that broad way is the way of the transgressor, of the rebel, of those who are selective in their obedience to the word of Yahweh. If you are chosen of Yahweh for salvation eternal, then you won't be selective in your obedience to the word of Yahweh. But you will submit yourself totally and unquestionably and without reservation unto the word of Yahweh. To be saved, you've got to be obedient to Yahweh's word. That's why you don't respect a damn false prophet. You don't respect a damn false teacher. And a false prophet and a false teacher are those who proclaim and instruct a perverted and distorted and false word of Yahweh. Because a true message of Yahweh will Cause the scriptures of truth to be at harmony with one the other. But false prophet, false teacher will cause the scriptures of truth to be in contradiction to one another. So don't respect a false prophet. Don't respect the false. Don't follow. In fact, the book says, come out of her, my people. And be you separate. Come out from among the congregation of the dead. Have no fellowship with the congregation of the dead. And abide in the word of Yahweh. See, it's easy to determine who's of the congregation of the congregation of the dead. For the congregation of the dead, the congregation of the damned, they will not abide in Yahweh's word. When you abide in Yahweh's word, you're being obedient. Consistently obedient to every word of Yahweh. When you're abiding in Yahweh's word, you're being consistently obedient to every word of Yahweh. So, forsake, reject, don't respect false prophets and false teachers. From this day forward, don't respect a false prophet. Don't respect a false teacher. Don't respect the false. 
but abide in the word of God. And for those who do not know of a Yahweh, to know him, you first must be reconciled and redeemed unto you, unto him by way of the new birth, according to Acts 38. That is repentance and water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. For the pardon of sin and the regeneration of your soul and the infilling, the initial infilling of the Holy Spirit baptism, along with the renewing of the self by spirit baptism, add initial evidence by speaking in a tongue, and y'all permits one to speak. And once you're born of Yahweh, by obeying Acts 38, you must diligently learn the principles of the doctrine of Yahweh. That you may be made into a mature disciple. That if you're a man, you may be raised up according to y'all's will to ministry. So take heed to the word of the Holy Ghost that you may receive salvation. For if you reject this word of the Holy Ghost, of assure this word that y'all has spoken by the mouth of his messenger, of one of his messengers, it will surely testify to your damnation. O Yahweh, in the name of your beloved son, Yeshua HaMashiach. I thank you for giving your servant another opportunity and the strength and the mercy and the uncommon favor to speak and instruct your set-apart word to whosoever will. Thank you for the understanding that one gives, is given the opportunity to plant your word and another is given the opportunity to water, to nurture the word, or reinforce the word that has been planted. But you is the one who must give the increase. I beseech you, O Yahweh, that you will draw your chosen to hear your word and bring forth abundant fruit unto your glory, honor, and praise. You allow this same word that is preached by your messenger to give a testimony of damnation unto those who are vessels fitted for destruction. Continue to be with us, your elect ones, whatsoever was scattered upon the face of your arrest, O Yahweh. Open wide your chambers of blessing and windows of Shamaim upon us, pouring out your uncommon favor, wisdom, and patience, and infinite mercy, and healing, and loving kindness upon us. Rebuke, bind, and cast out every evil work, and work up darkness against your servants, against your elect people, renew Israel. Increase the faith of your servant, O God. Continue to grant your servant good success and prosperity in this ministry of your giving your servant. I thank you, O Yahweh, for your great goodness, your great mercy, your great favor you shown upon your servants, upon your servant. I give you name, honor, glory, and praise. So be it, so be it. Remember, family, as you're able and enabled of Abba Yahweh, please show your support by sending a donation of any amount to the support and relief of your beloved brother and your faithful minister, Messiah Yeshua. Please donate either to my cash app, PayPal, or Venmo, which be in the description of 
this message. Guard your beloved brother in your prayers. I love you all, family. May y'all bless all the elect with a blessed Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.